the Lord from Jerusalem. But don't forget that he said the house, not houses. Somebody said give to jump from church to house. You have to understand that the church and the house refer to the same group of people. Yes, yes. First Timothy chapter 3, verse number 14. Paul, in writing to Timothy, said these things right unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if something holds me up, but if I tarry long, if I stay longer than I plan, that thou mayest know how thou ought to behave thyself in the house of God, which is a church. So the house and the church are one and the same. And if there's only one church, there's one house. I don't know where that child came from. Maybe God has given it to me. It must like what I'm preaching. Am I clear so far? All right, let's go to Zechariah chapter 1. Verse 16, behold, when you, if you're on your way, say, thank you, Jesus. If you're not there, say, help me, Lord. You see, that was a time when I would just run away from you. I quote all this, and you can quote all of it, but I found that you can go too fast. If you eat too fast, you'll get indigestion, and you'll fool around, it'll come back up on you. Is that right? Yeah. Is that right? If you drive too fast, you can, you can mess yourself up. Is that all? I think I'll stop back. So I don't go as fast as I used to in going through these scriptures because you're out there and you, you know your soul needs to be saved. And you have a guest here and you know they need to be saved. So you don't want me to quote it before they get there. That sounds like you. That sounds like uh, a bus at the bus stop. And you're walking there and you're about to get on to the bus and they drive off. <laughs> I wouldn't think much of that bus driver, would you? Right. And the next time I saw him. Well, amen, amen, amen. I tell him about it. Then you see me. So I see you following me in the bank. All right, All right. Zachariah 116, you there say amen. Yeah. In prophecy, book said, Behold, God said, Behold, I am returned to where? Jerusalem. Jer everybody say Jerusalem. 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 Now underline Jerusalem. Underline Jerusalem in your minds or in your Bible. Behold, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercy. My house. That is a game. Didn't say my houses, but my house. What is the house? The church. Where will the house be built? In Jerusalem. If your church was built in Little Rock, Arkansas, wrong place. Oxford, England, wrong place. New York City, wrong place. Say amen. amen. My house shall be built in it. Where? In Jerusalem. Micah 4, 1 and 2. Micah 4, 1 and 2. Let me put it up here so you guys have some sense of organization. Micah 4. See, I know what all this is up here. You might not, but I do. What I mean is I understand it as, as it's written. Uh, I don't know where the eraser went, you know. Amen. Amen. I wish we could lose some of these false churches around here. Amen. Amen. Right. Now you find in Micah 4, 1 and 2 that it sounds just like Isaiah 2 and 2. So we won't go back. The same truth is expressed. The Lord's house shall be established in the latter times. Uh -huh. Is that what it says? Or right. right. the latter day 
days. All right? Now, if the church was going to be established in the latter days, and the Bible says in Hebrews 1 and 1, God, who had sundry times, and just keep, hold your finger right there in Micah 4, 1 and 2, and turn over to Hebrews 1 and 1. The Bible says, God, who had sundry times and in divers manners, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by his son. All right, now, so that shows us that during the first century, those were considered the last day. Right. Well, now, if the house was of God was to be established in the last days, how can you say the church existed during the personal ministry of Christ? Right. Now, let me hit you a lick here. <laughs> <laughs> if the church of Christ existed in its state of perfection, during the personal ministry of Christ, while Jesus lived on earth. Amen. Gentiles couldn't be a member of it. All right. uh -oh. You don't believe me? Matthew 10 and verse 5. Matthew 10 and verse 5. If the church existed in a state of perfection during the personal ministry of Christ, you and I couldn't be members. Gentiles could not be members. You know why? Because it was under the limited commission. Matthew 10, verse 5. What does the Bible say? Brother Burgess, if you don't mind, read it, please. These 12, Jesus sent forth. Yeah. Commanded them, saying, commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentile. What did he say? And in any city of the Samaritan, enter ye not. Yes, read. But go rather to the, go rather sheep of the house of Israel. To the sheep. The lost sheep. Lost. We know what kind of sheep they were. Yeah. Lost oh. sheep of the house of, the house of Israel. Yeah. And if the church existed in a state of perfection during the personal ministry of Christ, Gentiles couldn't be members. Yeah. And then when you go back to Isaiah 2 and 2, the Bible says, all nations shall flow unto it. All nations couldn't have flowed unto it. Not if it was in existence in a state of perfection during the personal ministry of Christ. Then I, didn't the Bible say in Isaiah 2 and 2, all nations, Jew and Gentile, shall flow unto it. That couldn't have happened during the personal ministry of Christ because they were sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I have other examples. You know what? Jesus didn't even receive his kingdom until he was resurrected from the dead. Did you hear me? He didn't even receive his kingdom until he was resurrected from the dead. All right. Meet me in Luke. Chapter. You have time for this? Luke 24 and verse 46. That brother Burgess has a voice on him, doesn't he? <laughs> has a voice like my grandfather had. Would you read? I say please to brother Burgess. Would you read please? <laughs> All right. And said unto them, now Jesus said unto his disciples, read. Thus it is written. Thus it is written. And thus it behooves Christ to suffer. Yes. And to be raised from the dead the third day. Yes. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached. preached in his name among all nations. Beginning where? At Jerusalem. Did I tell you to underline Jerusalem? Right. Beginning where? At Jerusalem. Read. And ye are witnesses of these things. Ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise yes. of my Father unto you. Yes. But tarry ye. Tarry ye where? Right. In the city of Jerusalem. Until ye be endowed with power. Yes. All right. Go ahead. Read. And he led them out as far as to Bethany. And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. 
And it came to pass. And while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. He was parted from them and carried into heaven. Into heaven. And they worshiped him. And they worshiped him. You know what happened? A cloud received him out of their sight. Yes. Now, I'm going back in prophecy. And I'm going to show you what was happening atop the cloud. Uh -huh. All right. All right. Get me Daniel 7. Uh -huh. Now, Jesus was on earth. And he left his disciples yes. and was carried into heaven. Right. You'll find that in Acts 1, 5, on through 8, and down through the latter part right. of that. Amen. He went to heaven, but Daniel with his prophetic eye, uh -huh. the power of God yes. was able to stand atop the cloud in prophecy. Right. And see Jesus coming up. Daniel 7, 13, the Bible says what? I saw it in the night he vision. said, I saw it. Now, how did Daniel see it? In the night vision. He saw it in the night vision. In other words, God gave it to him. Yeah. I saw in the night vision. And behold, and behold one, like the Son of Man. one like the Son of Man. All right, then oh. he came with the clouds of heaven. Daniel is atop the cloud and Jesus is coming up to the Father. Right. And he said, Behold, I saw in the night vision, uh -huh. one like the Son of Man, he came, come on, right. with the, the clouds of, he yeah. came, with the clouds of heaven, of heaven. And, came to the of days. and came to, that's God the Father, yeah. came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him, and they him, brought him near before him. And there was, oh, yes. was given him dominion, dominion and glory and a king out. But the question is when? When he ascended on high? All right. After he died, after he was buried, and after God raised him from the dead. So Jesus didn't even get his kingdom. Yeah. Until after he was resurrected from the grave. Yeah. I tell you something else. If the church existed during the personal ministry of Christ, it didn't have a head. Right, <laughs> Get me Ephesians 1. Get me Ephesians 1. Verse 19. I like that verse that you have. That must be the new King James. Yes, King James. I see. <laughs> well, you must have just bought it. All right. <laughs> you know, I just tease every now and then. Yeah. I don't mean any harm whatsoever. Amen. Ephesians 1. And verse 19, the Bible says what? And what is the exceeding the greatness of his power to us for? Who, who believe? According, according to the working of his mighty power, power. Which he wrought in Christ. Which he wrought in Christ. When he raised, when he raised him from the dead. And set him at, and his, set him at his own right hand. Yeah. When did he set him at his own right hand? Yeah. When he raised him from the dead. Yeah. And set him at his own right hand. Where? In what kind of places? Heavenly places. Far above Muhammad. Far above Muhammad. Far above all principalities. Power, might, and dominion. In every name that is named. Not only in this world. But also in that which is to come. And has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head of all things to the church, which is his body. When did he receive his headship? After he was raised from the dead. So if the church of Christ existed during the personal ministry of Christ, 
while he lived on his earth, the church didn't have a head. <laughs> you, you just might as well let that alone. <laughs> now, prophecy. I make a mess up here, Amen. but I clean it up. Amen. I wish some of our preachers would do that. <laughs> they make a mess Amen. of a text and leave it just like that. Amen. But if you're going to tear it down with the Greek and tear it down in the Hebrew, before you let those folk go home, put it back together. Right. Trying to show how smart you are, gonna let these folk miss the truth. I know Greek. I know Greek. But I don't preach Greek because you don't speak Greek. These folk have a hard time with English. Now you're up there speaking Greek. Now I'm not saying we can't delve into the Greek because sometimes it's necessary. Is that all right? Now when I said I know Greek, I didn't say I know how well, know it how, how well I know it. Alpha and Omega, that's Greek. Fast in the land. I know Greek. <laughs> now, the preacher has but one wife. And that wife is the church. Now, you ought to be able to see by now that Christ has but one church. Couldn't be the Baptist church because he wasn't back there. It didn't come on the scene until the 1600s. Yes. Way too late. Yes. Wasn't the Catholic Church. No, Way too late. Wasn't the Presbyterian Church. Way too late. Too late. Yes. <laughs> 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 we in prophecy. We see that one house was a prophesied. Right. And that the house is the what? The church. Amen. Then we move to the period of preparation. Amen. You know, whenever you get ready to do something, you have to prepare. Right. I went out there on the job with Brother Booker today. <laughs> you know what? I think he was trying to work me on the sly. Amen. I told him, you'll never get me. Back out here, I thought he was angry with me. I had on my shoes and they got dusty. I said, Doc, I'm going to have to add this to the invoice. <laughs> and he turned around and said, uh, okay. I was up there on that high rise building. I didn't like that. Come on, Doc. He just walking those boys. I just stood there and looked at him. You see, I'm used to walking this Bible. I'm not used to walking boards. <laughs> but I noticed that before his work started, somebody else prepared the way for him to do his work. If they hadn't done their work, you wouldn't have any work with them. <laughs> John the Baptist did his work. Prepare the way for the Lord. Matthew 3 and verse 1. The Bible says in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Why well, my time is just gone. <laughs> I like to hear a young man say that. You know what? He could be at the movie somewhere. He could be out there on drugs, but no, he's not. Don't tell me all young folk are gone to the dogs. That's an example right there. That's another example right there. All our young folk are not gone. You're doing a good job with your young folk. Is that all right? If you made it, they can make it. If we depend on the word of God, he said, preach. But I want to hear Booker say that. Man. <laughs> yeah, you know 
old. I'm just 37 years old, but I, I'm no fool. Yeah. See, you thought I was 47, but that's all right. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. I'm just glad to be alive. Yeah. You sitting there worrying about being your age, just be glad you're alive. Yeah. I'd rather, I rather look as bad. I don't look too bad, and there's no need to lie. I don't look too bad. I'm a good-looking fella. If it's nothing but in my own mind, I have to think it even if Daniel doesn't think it. That's why he laughing so hard. In those days, well, when you get old and you don't have what you used to have, you can say in those days. Well, back to the point. In those days, Daniel, what does the book say? In those days came John the Baptist doing what? Preaching in the wilderness. Yeah. Of Judea. Read. And saying. What did he say? Repent ye. Repent ye. For the kingdom of heaven. For the kingdom. Not kingdoms. All right. But the kingdom. Somebody said, Gibbs, you jumped from house to church and from church to kingdom. Yeah. You jump from house to church and from church to kingdom. All right. All right. All right. You need to understand that the house, the church, the kingdom, and the body of Christ all refer to the same group of people. Yeah. All right. That's right. That's right. Matthew 16, 18. Yes. Somebody say, I can't follow him. <laughs> now, if you can follow all my children. Oh. <laughs> Days of our lives in general hospital, you can follow me. Because they'll show a scene where a man is about to kiss a woman, or they're about to kiss and break it off. And then somebody else is at the grocery store. You understand that? You can pick it, you can follow me. Matthew 16. <laughs> Matthew 16. Verse 18, and Jesus said, and I say unto thee, speaking to Peter, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. Notice, in verse 18, he said church, and he said, and I, who, I, who, Jesus, Jesus said, I will give unto thee, what? The keys of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. That institution that he referred to as the church in verse 18, he referred to as the kingdom in verse 19. Now, let me tell you something about these keys. Some would say that all the churches make up the one church. Something wrong with that because the keys that Jesus gave Peter won't fit the Baptist church. Now, you're trying to make Peter have a master key. <laughs> you see, I have a master key for my house. It fits the storage doors outside, the front door, the back door. It fits every door of my house. You know why? Because when I go through one door, I have to reach for one key and go through another door, reach for another key. Well, that's why I got a master key. But Peter didn't have a master key right. that would fit the Catholic Church. All right. The method keys won't fit. No I dare you to take this brother's keys and try to start your car. Right. Now, if you're a car thief, there might be a way you can do that. Yeah. But I'm not talking about that. Right. It doesn't work that way. Right. If that be the case, if any keys would do, you wouldn't try to find your key. Now, I don't know whose keys these are, but watch them look for them after church. <laughs> See, he wants his keys. Now, I don't know what this key goes to, but you do, don't you? Oh, you don't have to. That's all right. <laughs> Let me have something. Uh, well, now, I'm not going to go there. You want your keys, don't you? Why? Because they give you access. Wherever this key fits, it gives you access to that place. This key, this key, 
this key, right. this key, I'll give you access, yes, right? right yes. Now, if the, this key fits your house well, and this key fits your car, will you say any key will do? No, sir. No, sir. You mean to tell me that when you're in the dark, well. <laughs> you're from around trying to find your key for nothing when just any key would do? You know just any key won't do. That's why you're fumbling in the dark. Say, I know, I know it's a key because it's a little bit longer than the other. You know, I, I can tell the shape of the key. You in the dark. You know why? Because you know your key. Jesus knows his key. And they won't fit the Baptist church. And the apostles knew the keys. Because they didn't unlock the doors to the Baptist church. They unlocked the doors. They unlocked the doctrine to the church of Christ. Is that all right? And when they get through the keys, they're going to have to give them back to Jesus. And they didn't give the keys to the Pope so he could go down to the hardware store and get the locks changed. You have too many religious locksmiths coming in changing locks. Baptism is essential to salvation. And the Catholic Church comes in and says, and baptism is not essential. You change the lock. You better leave those locks like they are. Because the gospel keys won't fit those new locks. I'll preach long enough. I, long enough. I know you know it because you said you ain't saying that. <laughs> Only one church in prophecy. Now, brother, when I come back next year, y'all get some better chalk. <laughs> this, this chalk is just like these false churches. They're going to break apart. Now, the house, the church, the kingdom, and the body refer to the same group of people. So when there's one house prophesied in prophecy, in the period of preparation, and in the period of promise, when Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church. And in the period of perfection. Right. Acts 2, 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church. It shows that only one church was established. And only one church yes, right. was saved. Well, the church won't save you. Jesus saves, but he has to save to the church. Amen. Yes. Yes. I preached enough. The preacher's wife, he has only one wife. Right, now, tomorrow night, I'm going to finish this. And uh, I, I think you'll be surprised with something I, I have to say. But I'm through for tonight because I want to give you time to come to Jesus. Amen. I've shown you in the Bible. I've shown you in the Bible that there's only one church. And I've given it to you through an analogy. Christ is the preacher. The church is the what? Wife. How many wives does the preacher have? One. Now, if you can understand that, and I've shown you that the Baptist church is not the church of Christ. It wasn't even in existence. Why in the world would you stay in it? Somebody said, well, Gibbs, I have too much to lose. My family would talk about me. <coughs> You'd be surprised what they've already said about you. You can't please people. You better worry about pleasing God. Because God is the one who's going to determine whether or not you gain access to heaven. And I know it'll be through the agency of Jesus Christ. Uh, Acts 17, 30 and 31. Uh, judged by the one he has ordained. Well, are you concerned about going to heaven? Are you? Now, your pastor won't preach like I'm preaching. I dare you to bring your pastor tomorrow night and show me where reverend is in the Bible and it applies to him or to man. I dare you. I dare you. I challenge you. Bring your pastor. So he can give us book, chapter, and verse. Where the word reverend is used and it applies to to man. They don't ever show up. If you call them tonight and say, 
Pastor, the preacher asked me to bring you up there so you can show him Bible where Reverend is used and it applies to man. You know what he's going to say? Oh, you must have been up there at one of them Church of Christ meetings. <laughs> but I want you to notice, those of you who are watching television, whatever, I want you to notice he's not here and he's not coming. He's not going to show up. He's not going to show up. But I hope he hears the message and obeys the truth before it's everlastingly and eternally too late. Amen. Now, if your pastor won't tell you the truth about reverence, what makes you think he's telling you the truth about your salvation? If he won't tell you the truth about reverence, what makes you think he's going to tell you the truth about the church of Christ? My father had one preacher to tell him, Gibbs, I know it's right. I just have kids in college. You don't worry about your kids being in college. Worry about yourself being in hell. God will take care of you. He owns the cattle of a thousand hills. The gold is mine, he says. The silver is mine. He said, you seek ye first the kingdom of God. Not just any righteousness. And his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Yes. Now, God has sense enough to know that there are some other things in life because he gives us all. Yes. Jesus says, seek ye first. Yes. There are some secondary things, yes. like taking care of your family. You can't deny that. Yes. See, you, you, you can't deny that. You have to take care of your family, but you have to seek ye first the kingdom. And his righteousness. God will take care of you. Don't worry about what your friends say. You say, Gibbs, I believe it, and I want to be baptized tonight. That's the only way you become a member of the Church of Christ. It's by being baptized. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for by one spirit are we all what? Into how many bodies? One body. God bless you tonight. We're going to stand. If you believe the gospel with all of your heart, and you're willing to repent of your sins, Acts 2.38. Of course, you can't believe unless you hear. Yeah. Romans 10.17. Let's quote it together. Faith cometh by hearing. Notice it didn't say by faith or coming faith coming by prayer. No need you up around the morning been praying for faith. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the Quran. The Book of Mormon. Hear it by the word of God. Then you must repent. Change your life. And the first thing, if you're outside the body of Christ, you need to change, religiously speaking. Now, we have some religious changes we need to make and some moral changes we need to make. On the religious side, you need to make up in your mind you are going to abide in the doctrine of Christ. And you're going to worship according to the mandates of Jesus Christ yes. as they apply to the New Testament church. Yes. Yes. You need to make up in your mind. You're going to turn your back on denominationalism. Amen. And if your moral life is not up to par, you need to change that. Yes. That it might conform to God's will. And then you must confess Jesus Christ to be the son of I'm telling you how to become a member of the church of Christ. Yeah. Some of our preachers don't do that anymore. Yeah. Say, well, I have my degree now. Yeah. I don't care. You can have as many degrees as a thermometer. Right. You need to tell people how to become members of the church of Christ. Yeah. If anything, you ought to know better. But some of our folks go to school and when they come back, they think they're so small. It reminds me of a story. A young man was there on the farm. Now, let me give you the plan of salvation first. You confess Jesus Christ to be the Son of God, then you're baptized into Christ. But some folks think they're so small. A young man was at home on the farm. 
and they had a, a mule there, uh -huh. old Beck. Yeah. And uh, he knew how to get Beck to do anything he wanted Beck to do. Amen. He went off to college, came back, was out there in the field. Jumped off the wagon, ran in the house, said, Daddy, something's wrong with Beck. What do you mean? Oh, sh sh uh, 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 won't move. He said, what are you saying? He said, I'm saying, proceed, Rebecca. <laughs> he said, you know, before you left her, you were saying, get it up, Beck. Yeah, yeah. But now you're saying, proceed, Rebecca. She doesn't understand what you're saying. <laughs> So when you go to school and you come back saying, proceed, Rebecca, instead of saying, get here back, when you go off to school and you come back and you preach it over the people's heads, they're not going to respond because they don't know what you're talking about. What would you think of your paper man if he threw the paper atop your house? <laughs> Up in the tree. You can't reach it. You can't get it. And some of us preachers right. think we're so smart, we elevate our sermons so high that people can't get it. And newspapers are not going to do you any good up in the tree. And if you're going to have to put it way up there, climb up there to bring it down, why don't you just put it down in the first place? Stand up, obey the simple gospel of Christ. 